We're doing some German translation practice and focusing on the verb machen, which has two meanings really, to do and to make. And we're going to be focusing on this verb in the present tense. So let's have a look at its conjugation. So this is our regular conjugation table that we're used to. Ich, du, er, sie, es, wir, ihr, sie. We need the correct endings. And so we're going to add them in. Have a go yourself, if you like, beforehand. Ich mache. Du machst. Er, sie, es, macht. Wir machen. Ihr macht. And sie machen. It's a very regular verb, following our regular verb endings. And using those, using this table, let's have a go at the following eight sentences. You might like to pause the video now and have a go for yourself for translating before we go through them together. Number one, I do soccer. So we're going to look at our table and we see that the I do is translated by ich mache. And there are no surprises there with the E ending, very typical for ich forms of the verb. And soccer is Fußball. So we'll translate it like that. Don't forget the capital F on Fußball. And there are no issues with word order because we've only got three words and so it's going to be the same as English. Number two, he does German. So again, we're looking at this table to find where the he is. There it is, er, and er forms are uh, most of the time in German, unless it's a weird verb, like modal verbs, followed by a T ending. So he does German, er macht Deutsch. Again, we've got a capital D here because German is a noun, uh, just like soccer is here um, with the F, the capital F, even though in English we don't have a capital <laughs> S for soccer because soccer is just a normal noun for us, whereas German signifies something more. It's a bit of a proper noun. Number three, we do maths. Let's have a look. We do maths. Wir machen. Wir machen. So let's get the correct form in here. Wir machen Mathe again. There's, there are no issues with word order. Um, just a different ending on the verb, depending on who's in charge of the verb. It's the via in this case. Now, number four, what are you doing? In this case, you're going to have to have a look at the table and see, okay, well, the, the U form has an ST. That's what we'd expect. But the word order is going to be a bit different because it's a question. So we start with the question word if there is one, and then straight away the verb. Was machst du? So the, the machst, the verb is going to become before the du because it's a question. But it still has that st ending because du is still in charge of it, even though it is a question. Number five is a bit of an idiom. And it's when you want to tell somebody that you're going to do something. Right, we'll do it. And um, this is what it is. Gut. Mach ich. Gut, mach ich. Um, so don't worry too much about the word order here. Um, really, there's there's a, a word here which is sort of silent. Das mach ich, something like that. Um, but that's a handy phrase to use. Notice the E ending there um, for the ich form. Number six, dad's making the meal. Papa macht das Essen. So how do we get that? Well, we have to look at the table and find, well, where's dad? Where's papa? And you have to find out which of these words papa could be replaced with. So we look at all of them. The only one that makes sense is er, he. Um, and that's why we get that T ending for macht. Number, f uh, number seven. I still have a lot to do. Ich muss noch viel machen. Now, in this case, 
machen isn't really in the present tense. Uh, and that's because we have a modal verb. So I've put this in here to stretch you. Machen isn't really in the present tense, even though the sentence is. I still have a lot to do. It's sort of present tense. You still have it. Um, or have to do it. Um, I have to do a lot. I still have to do a lot or have a lot to do. Uh, indicating a sense of obligation here. Um, and machen, as the second verb, it's not going to have an ending. So don't confuse it for these two. Machen is not the via or the z form here. It's because it's the second verb um, that it doesn't have a person attached to it, someone in charge of the verb. Um, and so the muss is in second position as the verb, and then the machen will go right to the end of the sentence in its just generic personless form with that with that en there which indicate right from the top here indicate that it's in its base form what we call its infinitive okay number eight last one what are they doing this evening again we have a question so we have a question word if we've got a question word um, we'll put the german question word straight away and then we put the verb was machen right because we're getting this machen from they, sie machen. Was machen sie heute Abend? What are they doing this evening? And the verb is uh, is in second position there, as we've discussed, because of the question word to start with. So the person in charge of the verb comes after it. And uh, really, apart from that, it's quite simple. This evening in, in German is translated by today evening, heute Abend, um, but it's good to see in a question how the conjugation rules with the correct ending still apply even though the word order will be slightly different.